Anyway, back on topic. Okay, so a little backstory. I posted the video across different platforms. I mostly got a positive reception, but very little discussion. Except for at Reddit, where it's pretty much the opposite. I got a lot of negative reception, but I got a bunch of discussion, which is what I crave the most. I welcome the pushback because it lets me put my theory to the test and also see other perspectives. And now I have a brand new theory out of it. That's why I made Deep Dive, to show people how to find the positives in the story, which will prepare you on how to find the positives in life. My goal is to show you that you can find the good in something and take that with you to have a positive effect on your life. For Anyway, let's go back to Reddit and actually look at the reception. So the first thing I get here is, uh, I don't get your point. You know, you say Kyrie lost her fault, heart and created nobody, all that. And I don't see where the confusion is. Well, that's the problem. You don't see where the confusion is. There's inconsistencies in the explanation of where Kyrie came from. I mean, sorry, where Nominate came from. Once you see that, then that opens the way to say, you know, it could just be inconsistent because bad writing or they just didn't know better or it could be inconsistent for a reason because there's actually an explanation that hasn't been revealed yet that's the whole point of the video to show the possibility that there's another way to look at it um, I say you know I explain there are inconsistencies there's things you're not considering you know look if you go to the reports I actually explain that and I don't know, apparently that's a bad thing to say hey this is why you know people don't like when you think differently or disagree but uh you know it is what it is then this person says you know wasn't created on Destiny Island like obviously I know that it shows it right there in the thumbnail it says nominee was created on a hollow bash see things like that like if you can't follow along in one simple video how could I assume that you really understand the story itself when there's so much more you have to work with you know the same person here like you got to use context so you can't just take something out of context and be like you're a liar no I'm calling out the inconsistency I'm saying I don't have to spell it out for you you should have the reading comprehension to understand that but anyway we have zero sore he's the true blessing here Without him, uh, this video wouldn't have been made. I wouldn't have been inspired to think this far and come up with that new theory. Um, you know, this is really negative connotation around disagreeing with people, but I don't have that. I, I have no problem disagreeing with a person. So, you know, I genuinely mean this to you, Zero Sword. Thank you for this discussion. Okay, so he says... Uh, 17 seconds in, nobodies are created due to the heart succumbing to darkness. So, here's the problem with his premise. He's saying, you know, nobodies are made because of the heartless, not because they lose their heart. Right? And he has his reasons for it. And they're good reasons, but I'll explain later why it's incorrect. And then he says the thing about Roxas that I said in the secret ending with the soul, and I was saying maybe he didn't have soul, sort of soul, maybe he didn't have anything so. Yeah, I mean, he's right in this thing. That didn't really make any sense. Even when I was listening back to it, I was like, maybe I shouldn't include this, but I was like, nah, whatever. It's just a secret ending. So, yeah. I mean, there's definitely more to think about it, and I do have more new ideas about it, but I'm not even going to say it because I don't want to go too off topic. That'll definitely show up in a future episode. Okay, so I start responding. I use reports as my evidence. Um, the reason I'm just skimming over this is because it's going to be redundant later on when I get to the next response. But, um, so I'll just skip to the bottom where I say, if you consider that there was a second body, you can then have a complete answer without inconsistencies. Then that way it makes sense that Nominate could be made from Sora's body if she was made from a portion of Kyrie's body that was already in Sora's. Just something to consider. So what I'm saying is, Rather than, here's this proven fact, no, here's another possibility. Because there's really only two situations that can make it consistent. Either nominee was made from nothing, which I said in my video, I'm open to that. That is a possibility. Nominee was made from nothing. 
or she was made from something. Here's the problem with most people who say, you know what, she was made from something. She was made from Sora's body and soul, which it says in the report. The problem with that is if she was really made from Sora's body and soul, then she would belong to Sora because the nobody is the body and soul left behind. If that's left behind, then it needs to return to where it came from. So in order for that to be Nami to really be from Sora, then that means Nami has to return to Sora. That would mean Nami belongs to Sora. That's the main inconsistency with saying that Nominee was made from something and that something was Sora. You can't say it's made from Sora, but then she has to return to Kairi. And that right there, I wouldn't ever, I didn't even think of that when I made my video, actually. It was because um, Zero Sora gave him up with his counter arguments that it then inspired me to think about that. So that's why, that's why you shouldn't be afraid to disagree with someone. Great things can come out of it. Anyway, so he, he says, you know, souls have memory. I, I reference lingering will. So I know that um, he's, Nomura said it's his thoughts. My point is, you know, well, what are the thoughts representing? Is it his heart or his soul? It could be either, really. It's up to interpretation. Um, we know that the body is made of three things. Their body, heart, and soul. So what are the, the thoughts? What is category is thoughts under? That's my point. And I was under the assumption that it was his soul. It could be his heart too, but we don't know that. that that's why I said that. But anyway, I don't want to go off topic. Um, so, first thing. As you can see, for nobody to create it, a person must turn to heartless is wrong. So this... A real problem with how he's looking at this, right? He's saying you should highlight the rest, yet she has no corresponding heartless. That's not relevant to me. The reason it's not relevant is because I'm not looking at it from that perspective. The problem with you is you're already looking at it with a set narrative. You're looking at this with a biased hindsight. You already have in your head heartless are the result of a nobody. So when you look at that and you read this, you're automatically thinking, okay, well this supports this. When that's not true, that's the false equivalency that I was referring to before. The problem is, you're, you're trying to use this as proof, but this in itself has to be proven. You can't use proof that has to be proven, that's a never-ending cycle. It has to be proof that's set in stone. You can't have your proof left up to interpretation, then it's not really proof. To really explain this to you, I want to show you this term. Correlation does not imply causation. So here's your main problem. You're trying to say, because they're corresponding, that this must result in this. Factor A, the heartless, must result in factor B. What you're not realizing is factor C, which is that they're losing a heart. This is your problem. Third factor C, the common casual variable. You can't say because A happens and B also happens, A is the cause. That's not how it works. That's a fallacy. That's fallacious. So there's a bunch of examples here for you to learn from. And I know this is maybe a little weird, like why am I actually explaining this? Because deep dive in this food for thought, it's more to, to me than just these theories. Like it's all fun and all. I love it. It's, you know, I'm very passionate about it. But um, ultimately, I like, I want to teach people. I want to say, hey, this is what you can learn from this, especially with deep dive. If you go to deep dive, you'll see I really go ham on that. So there's a bunch of examples. I'll provide my own example that I like to use when I um, refer to um, correlation does not imply causation. So there's this illness referred to as the common cold. And this misleads a lot of people because of the name. They might think, well, being cold makes me sick, but that's not true. Being cold lowers your immune system. Then a virus attacks you, and the virus is what makes you sick, not being cold. So this is to relate to your situation. You're saying the heartless makes the nobody. Well, no, it's losing the heart that makes the nobody. It's the third factor. I even uh, explained that to you in my first response 
Okay, so you're looking at it like, so this causes this, causes that. That's not how it works. Factor C causes both A and B. You can't just look at it like it happens in order. Sure, one thing might happen before the other. That's because we're just seeing it. We're seeing the heartless happen before the nobody. But that doesn't mean the heartless caused the nobody. But, well, um, I'll definitely explain even more later on. Okay, so back to this quote. So you're saying, you know, this implies... The correlation implies the causation. Well, you don't have to look at it that way. So first of all, I'm not saying you're wrong because it's correlation does not imply causation. It doesn't mean correlation doesn't mean causation. It could. It very well could. The problem with you is that you're trying to use it as proven fact. If you were like me and trying to say it's a possibility, I'd have no problem with you using this as your proof. That's completely okay. You want to use it as your proof for the possibility? Then yeah, that's fine. But you, if you're using it to say, no, this is proven fact. We already know how nominees created. Here's the reason. Well, then you can't use this because it's fallacious. So the way I'm looking at it is nominees and nobody created when a young girl's heart left her body, yet she has no corresponding heartless. So what this means to me is literally Ansem is trying to explain to the viewer the situation, which is what the reports are for. He's saying she became a nobody, yet she has no heartless. Well, obviously, if someone has a nobody, you're going to assume that they have a heartless because that's the normal way of going. But Namine, I mean, sorry, Kyrie is an exception. That's the whole point. It's just going, you know, there's a nobody, so of course there's going to be a heartless. Oh, wait, there isn't a heartless. Well, that's a surprise. That's not normal. That's all. That's how I see it. And you could be right. Or I could be right. But that's the possibilities rather than using it as fact. Okay, so I was saying that people don't turn into nobody simply from losing their heart. See, that's the problem. You're saying turn into nobody. They don't turn into nobody. They turn into heartless. Nobodies are created. See, that's where you're really going wrong. And you're un you're having this misconception that they're turning into nobodies. And I know that may seem nitpicky from my end, but I'll explain later why it's really important to understand that they're not turning into nobody. Except the only way for nobody to be born is from the heart to fall to darkness. And a heart falls to darkness by becoming a heartless. Therefore, the process of turning into a heartless is what creates nobody. So we would be on the exact same page, but here's the problem. You say that the process of turning into a heartless is what creates nobody. No. The process that is the result of losing a heart creates a nobody. If you just change that, then there you go. You're allowed to say that. You're allowed to say that and still believe this. But once you enter once you enter this, well that's when you're you're trying to use the implications rather than the fact. The reason why they can't become a nobody is because they lack the darkness in their hearts. Again, that's there nowhere is that ever stated. They, that is never stated that they can't become a nobody because they lack the darkness in their heart. You're you're saying that. You're assuming that based off of the implications. But again, you can't use that as fact. You know, I'm not trying to argue against you having a possibility or a theory. I promote that. I say, yeah, of course. Yeah. But for you to sit here and say, this is a fact, that's wrong because it's never been stated. And then you say, or how when Terra or Max and Xehanort were created, recreated in Kingdom Hearts 3, Terra's body no longer had a heart, his heart. What does that have to do? He didn't, if he got recreated without a heart, how could that he create a nobody? We're talking about losing hearts. I don't, I don't really understand why you bring that up. If he got recreated without a heart, then okay, so be it. There's nothing to it. He just didn't have a heart. I never said nobodies are created because people don't have hearts. I said nobodies are created because they lose the heart. And the process of losing a heart creates nobody. And then we have pr uh, princesses and Ven. So let's go over back to the original video so that I can show you. And I'm also going to add one more person to your list. With no darkness in a heart, Kyrie produced no heartless, instead of vanishing. So this vanishing is the key component that you're leaving. Well, I'm not going to say you're leaving out. You're just not really considering vanishing. The way you're making it seem is, oh, the heart leaves their body and then their soul and bo body just drops to the ground and then it, it gets revived as nobody. No, 
the body vanishes. It literally just dissipates. It disintegrates. It goes off into another realm and then gets reformed somewhere else. That's the key thing you're not putting into when it comes to nobody's being created. So when the princesses, when Ven, when Kairi lose their heart, their bodies don't vanish. And that's why I keep on telling you, you cannot say that nobody, that somebody's turned into nobodies. They don't turn into nobodies. Nobodies are created. To say that they turn into nobodies, well then, it would make sense that Ven and the princess would have to become nobodies because their bodies and soul are left behind. But that's not how it works. Nobodies are actually created. Instead of vanishing, her body remained in the realm of light. So there's another problem. It says instead of vanishing, but from what we know in Destiny Island, she did disappear. However, there could be a specific term when it comes to vanishing. Because Ansem wasn't there, so he wouldn't know what happened. So he could be thinking of vanishing in the terms of how Sora was when he became heartless, how Master Xehanort was when he took over Terra's body. There's usually a dissipating of the body. It, you know, turns into those gold, um, light orbs and just flows all over the place. That could be the vanishing Ansem is referring to. In so there you see, Sora vanished. And if Kairi's body was a part of Sora's, then it would make sense now why Nomine is created. Because there's two bodies there. Then you have Master Xehanort. Well, how do you know he doesn't have a nobody? You can't sit here and use it as fact for something you aren't aware of. It's never been stated that he doesn't have a nobody. And again, I'm not sitting here trying to say that I'm trying to prove facts here. I'm saying possibilities. The possibilities are endless when they're not proven fact. It isn't proven fact that Master Xehanort doesn't have a nobody. And then we have Ericus. That's something I see you try to bring up. Well, why doesn't Ericus have a nobody? Well, because Ericus died. There's a difference between turning to a heartless, aka losing your heart, which is the result of being a heartless, and then straight up dying. When you die, then your soul and heart and body are going away. Then you go to the final world. Although Ericus probably did some weird stuff, went into Terra's body somehow. It hasn't been properly explained, and I'm not going to give a theory on that because I don't want to go too off topic. But yeah, that's the difference between Ericus. I mean, dying is not the same thing as turning to, or heartless, aka dying is not the same thing as losing your heart. There's your explanation, because I know you're really stuck up on the whole, well, the princesses and Ben should have nobodies because they lost their hearts. No, because here's the difference. The princesses and Ben still have their somebody, if we want to specify it. They still have their regular body, but also known as their somebody. While when a nobody is created, well, it's being recreated. Now they're a nobody. They have their nobody. And again, that's why I emphasize it's not me nitpicking when you say they turn into nobodies. They don't turn into nobodies. I could see how you would think that looking at someone like Axel. Axel looks like Lee, right? And you might think to yourself, oh, Axel, I mean, Lee turned into Axel. No, Lee didn't turn into Axel. Axel was born because Lee turned into a heartless. And what, what you gotta also realize is it's not like. It's normal for nobody to look like a human. That no, that no one may look like a human, but they actually aren't a human. Nobodies are their own species. They're their own creatures. They're not like somebody's. So you'll turn me into a dusk. Nobody's their body may resemble what they look like as a human, aka somebody, but they can turn into dusk. They can revert or devolve their form because that's the species that they are. They are nobodies. They aren't the same as somebody's. So that's the difference between the vessel of a princess or Ven that doesn't have a heart and a nobody. The key factor is that they don't vanish, thus they aren't being reformed, aka created, not turned into. You're basically saying it's inconsistent for me to think this about Nominate, but not Roxas. Or in the, you can also include Sora in that because he got his, his body back. So here's the difference between Namine Ro and Roxas and Sora. So Namine has two situations. Either she was created from nothing, which is plausible. I'm open for that. Or she was created from something. But that something isn't credible. It isn't consistent. 
there's a flaw in the idea of what that something is when you say it's Sora's body. However, Roxas, first of all, started out as a normal nobody. I mean, we don't even know what Roxas looked like when Roxas was being formed, right? But we know that Roxas was on the way to just being looking like Sora. But then Sora got his body back, so that interrupted whatever Roxas was going through. That messed up Roxas's normal seat. Then he became a special nobody. But you actually have a reason, and there's really no problem with that reason, right? It's consistent. That's the thing that I'm constantly saying. I'm sounding like a broken record. Inconsistency with consistent. The reason it's consistent because we know Venetus was born without a face, but but because of his Ventus's connection with Sora, Venetus got a face. It's Sora's face. Well, Roxas didn't have a body, but because of Sora's connection with Ventus, Roxas got a body. It crossed. It's the consistency that matters. It's the consistency in the explanation and it's the consistency in the occurrence. And then Sora. So, yeah, Sora got a new body, but we can trace that back. We at least know why he got a new body. It was because of Kyrie, Kyrie's life. And there, there's no problem with that. There's no inconsistency with that. Right? And I can keep up, come up with a theory right on the spot for that. You know, and the problem with trying to explain these is that, you know, a lot of these things that I can say, I could be left open, left of interpretations. For example, why does Kyrie have two bodies? Well, I say, I can't answer that right now. I have to say that in a future theory. Because Kingdom Hearts is so complex that you have to say, in order to prove one thing, you kind of have to have another theory, and then another theory, and another theory. And there's no problem with that. And then to sit here and say, oh, well, why are you okay with this, but not okay with that? That doesn't mean anything. Like, basically what you're saying is you have to know everything about Kingdom Hearts to come up with a theory. You have to know every single proven theory in order to come up with one theory. How is that possible? <laughs> it's either all or nothing? No, you gotta start from somewhere, at least. You gotta start from somewhere, and then you make these chain of theories. But anyway, here's a little mini theory right off the spot that's so easy to make. So what do we know about Kyrie that's special about her light? Well, she doesn't just have a heart of pure light. She isn't like Ventus. You know, princesses of light, they have a heart of pure light for a reason. The reason is their hearts come from the Keyblade, the seven broken pieces of the Keyblade. Well, the Keyblade was created from Kingdom Hearts. It's, it's the divine weapon for Kingdom Hearts. So there you go, there's a connection. Kingdom Hearts, Keyblade, princesses of light, Kyrie. Kyrie gave Sora a body back. Kyrie was pretty much using a fraction of a power of something that comes that is divine. Boom. And we know that Kingdom Hearts has the power to make something out of nothing because, you know, it is said that Kingdom Hearts could be used to give nobody's heart. It has the power to complete existence. So there you go. That's, that's an easy way of looking at it. Now that right there isn't set in stone, but there's an explanation if you want them from me. But my point is, it's not even necessary. You don't have to know every single theory, have every single theory in place to just be like, oh, I believe this one thing. I think this one thing. Because you got to start from somewhere. This could have been my first theory. It wasn't, but it could have been. And then it led me to other things. So then you talk about uh, how hearts and data share a feeling. So that right there is literally the theme of Kingdom Hearts. It's saying that the heart is something that is which incomprehensible. However, it doesn't mean that you shouldn't not want to pursue trying to understand it. Just know that you're never going to understand it completely. That is the theme of Ansem the Wise. You know, he was trying so hard to understand the heart. Then eventually you realize, you know, it's foolish to think that. And then his rivalry with rivalry with Zemnis was that, you know, Zemnis was like arrogant about it. He's like, no, I know the heart. I know everything about it. I'm one with Kingdom Hearts. You know, that's the theme of it. That shouldn't discredit someone's theory because they don't know everything about it or say, hey, there is an explanation for this. Again, you can be allowed to pursue something even if you don't know everything about it. Um which is a huge theme of Kingdom Hearts, and I'll show you from Tetsu no more that it is like something he wants you to do, but that's later. Except she was born from the process of the heartless 
so th this right here we're we're, we're kind of on the same page like she really was born from the pro process but it was because of the lost heart and because Sora's body actually vanished unlike what would happen with a princess of life unlike something that happened in Kairi's body right so you say here it's not from Sora's body and soul well, who says who the reports say it is so who who am I more liable to believe you or the games you know if I came to you and said this is what I believe and then you had reports from the game that said otherwise are you really gonna believe me or the report now I say that the reports are inconsistent but again the difference between me and you is I'm trying to say hey there's inconsistencies this can lead to possibilities you're trying to say no this is fact you can't do that you can't just say these things are facts when you don't have the evidence to support that so yeah the reports say it's from the body and soul so that's what I have to work with right and I don't even specifically believe that it's from Sora's body and soul which is the point of my theory video but right down here I kind of already addressed the Kyrie situation so let's just move on you say again she was born from Kyrie's heart again nowhere in the series does it say nobodies are born from a person's heart does the heart play a role yeah because depending on how strong the, the heart is will determine if a nobody is made and it also determine how you know basically powerful or how evolved the nobody will be when it's born but again it's been stated that the nobody is the body and soul left behind again why would I believe you saying that nobodies are born from the heart rather than the report and again I'm not even trying to say you're specifically wrong if you have that as a theory as a possibility you have my full support I want people to have their own theories you can see in my videos I say hey you know believe what you want to believe I want to hear from you what you have to say my show I really want to emphasize the importance of searching for the deeper meaning and trying to give insight into how I come to my conclusion a big part of searching for the deeper meaning in art is free thinking it's a gift to be able to pull yourself away from the mainstream no, I'm not just saying that for the sake of trying to sound edgy or cool, rather to encourage people to be in charge of their own destinies. Don't let others determine your opinions, beliefs, and most importantly, your life. And there's a lot to learn, and that's why I want to share with you. I don't expect you to automatically trust me, but rather to judge me. There are a lot of people that would tell you, don't judge me, just trust in me, because I know better. Now, while they may know better from their experience, that's not going to truly help you unless they can convey their ideas to you and you properly understand what they're trying to convey to you. <laughs> I'm over here quoting my own videos like it's the Bible or something. But the reason I'm doing so is to show, you know, I'm not just some smooth talker saying this for the sake of this specific conversation. Like, these are stuff that I stand by, and this is my conviction, these are things that I believe. Um, and I know I can come off as rude or condescending, and I don't try to. Uh, and I'm working on that. You know, nobody's perfect. That's why I'm doing this, to grow. You know, I share with people, maybe I can help them grow, and then I want feedback for people to share with me so that I can grow. Anyway, let's get back on topic. Okay, so, like, I'm not here to prove you wrong I'm here to say you the way you're going about this isn't right you know you want to believe this yeah go for it you really want to see that people have their own theories so yeah can't say she was born from Kyrie's heart body and soul that's the only way she's gonna really belong to Kyrie the body and soul belong to Kyrie and nominee will return to Kyrie so you say at this point did Roxas and nominee need to return at all so it's great that you're asking questions and speculating, but when you're trying to prove this as fact, there's really no place for this on your side. Did Roxas need to return? Well, the game says, yeah, he did need to return. Um, they never did say that Nominee needs to return. They did say Roxas, it was required that he return. Uh, Sora was just fine with his new body. Was he really? Because Apparently he was asleep and he wasn't gonna wake up until Sora returned. I mean, until Roxas returned. That's 
what it seemed like. But he also had half of Sora's power, so that's kind of a big deal. And then Kairu was a complete person, we both agree on that. But it was Roxas and Naminé who were incomplete as nobodies. That much is obvious. So if Roxas has to return to Sora, despite Sora having a new body, again, you can't just say that. I mean, that's your speculation, that's fine, have that, but the game said that Sora needed Roxas. That's what the game, it never said Roxas needed to return to Sora. Okay, that was never stated. That's what you believe, that's fine. You can have faith in that, but you can't use that as fact. And then, another false equivalency. You say, surely Naminé has to return to Kairi. Well, we don't have, you don't have room for Shirley's because you're trying to prove this as fact. Fact to shut down my possibility. Uh, no, you, surely Naminé doesn't because Naminé is a special nobody. Roxas is a special nobody. And let's lump in Xemnas in there, special nobodies. Uh, they're special for a reason because they're different they go by their own rules you know nominate can manipulate memories surely roxas could do that too no that's not how it works they all have their specialties they're all different they all do different things you can't say oh because roxas is like that nominates no it's not how it works i wouldn't say nominate must hold half of Kyrie's power surely nominate had something for Kyrie, which was what this video's main theory was about but i wouldn't say it has to be that way because of Roxas. This part is funny because now you're entering my territory. You're you're agreeing with me, right? You're basically saying the reports are inconsistent. Well, that's great. I like that you're now on my side with that because a lot of the people, a lot of the other people in this thread seem to be on the assumption that the reports are the ultimate proof when obviously, as you're showing here, you agree with me, you can't say that it's consistent, right? He's just coming up with conclusions. But the thing is, right? Although it's not completely credible, this is still answering the whys we're talking about. He's still a very smart individual. He's one of the smartest in the entire series. I mean, he's literally called Ansem the Wise. So, although it's not 100% proof, it's still something to work with. It's still very good supportive evidence so like you're saying here you know he he's changing the way he's thinking which i agree it's why he changed it from saying it the girl's body to sora's body to their body he's he's saying multiple ways he's thinking of different ways that this has gone about he's evolving his thought process which is what i was doing too if ansem the wise can come up with theories why can't i so not to mention we as players were there to see Kyrie's heart so yeah, I mean, I already stated that at the point in the video I said, you know, Ansem wasn't there. In fact, I think it was just that clip that I played with the body thing. You know, Ansem wasn't there to see it, so that much is obvious. Um, and then you mentioned translation. Well, I mean, yeah, it's a possibility, but unless I see that it's been mistranslated, there's nothing I can really do with that. Can't really use hypotheticals as your proof. Especially since when you're trying to prove something as fact. Okay. Except we know it's impossible for that to happen. Nope. That's your theory. And I'm okay with that. But you can't say that's impossible. It's not a fact. It's a possibility. So you would have a complete answer if you consider that nominee's body came from nowhere. Which I already said that. I said, you know, I'm open to that. I'm just saying there's multiple solutions to that and then you say here's why i don't get you're upset but you're not upset so well i'm not upset i'm passionate yeah that's a very negative way of looking at passion you don't have to be upset just to be passionate about something um why does it make more sense so like i said earlier it's about stringing together theories you can't know everything at once. So to say, you know, why does it make more sense? Well, if you're genuinely asking me, if you genuinely want, genuinely want to know, well, follow, follow me. I will be revealing my theories over time. If you're just asking this rhetorically, well, I mean, I don't know what to tell you. I already explained that I do have a theory for it, but I just haven't revealed it yet. Um, 
It's not inconsistent. See, the problem is you're assuming these things. You're making these assumptions. You don't know what's going through my head on my head. It's not inconsistent. Rather, I'm saying that it is possible to say these things came from nowhere. But why not look for the deeper meaning of things? Right? Why not try to see if there actually is more to this? If there's another way to interpret something. So yeah, I wrote my thing and then it got deleted. Sounds really annoying. And uh, yeah. So, that's my thank you message. And so I'll address this for the YouTube audience. He's saying, you know, I should write a script. I'm assuming he's referring to the secret ending where I, you know, I do a bit of brainstorming. I just kind of freestyle and talk on the spot. But that's on purpose, you know. The reason is because it takes a long time to make these videos. And I, so when it's like the main section, I put a whole bunch of work into it. I'm, I proofread it constantly. I'm constantly looking at my edits, trying to make it better. You know, I go really hard for that. And then, secret ending is more ugh, all right here's my break it's kind of like a when i do it it's kind of like a victory lap i'm just like okay so i could finally relax and just say these things that are on my mind but i didn't actually want to put in the video and that's another thing to expect from this channel i'm a scatterbrain and easily go off topic so i write scripts that i aim to stick to in these videos but i still have a lot to say so as a solution there will be extra content known as secret endings where I go out of essay mode and into podcast mode and talk about the video, but in a much more freeform way. Once again, Zero Sora, thank you. This video wouldn't exist without you, so it's kind of like dedicated to you. Um, we got another person who gave a good response. Um, but it was kind of like a lot of the same thing that Zero Sora was saying, but it was still great for this person to like, think it through and notice the inconsistencies and say, hey, the, here's this, these counter arguments, which I really appreciate. So I'll read, um, Nami simply an anomaly, 100% agree, she is special, so I'm trying to find her origin. She's kind of like the most nobody of them all, really. So here, major problem, I kind of already went about it with Zero Sora, but to say, hey, Nami was created via his body and soul, and was able to solidify her own form, that, that's not something that's corroborated like that doesn't make sense either he was she was made from the body and soul or she was made from nothing those are the two options you can't say oh she solidified from his body and soul but not from his body and soul well then you might as well just say she was made from nothing i'm fine with that but don't say she was made from the body and soul but doesn't belong to sore that doesn't make sense if she was made from a piece of him well that piece was is supposed to go back so here, use Peter Pan as an example, and that's a great example, but the problem is the shadow is a missing piece of Peter Pan. The shadow came from Peter, right? Shadow was part of Peter, went back to Peter, okay? So Namine, if you're using this Peter Pan example, has to come from Kyrie. If you're saying Namine was created from nothing, well then that does not apply to the Peter Pan equation, because the shadow, we know the origin of the shadow. It was Peter Pan's shadow. Right? If Namine is Kyrie's shadow, well then Namine came from Kyrie. So we actually agree on this. We do we, we do agree on this, except I think you're thinking about it the wrong way. Namine looks like Kyrie, right? She resembles Kyrie. That's not enough to say, oh well, they can't coexist because she looks like her. Well, Shion looks like Kyrie. That doesn't change anything. Shion looks like Kyrie, but she's from Sora. Shion is literally the perfect example for this, really. Shion looks like Kyrie, but she was made from Sora, right? Namine looks like Kyrie, but she was made from Sora in quotation marks I'm using right now, but you can't see it. Yet Shion did return to Sora because despite looking like Kyrie, belonged to Sora. So my point is, if that was consistent, then Namine would return to Sora. But she doesn't. She returns to Kyrie because she's from Kyrie. And then we have this intellect down here. It says Nominee is explained in the answer reports. I say, you know, the answer reports are inconsistent. And the person says, I don't need to watch the video. She was fully explained in the game. So basically, to paraphrase this interaction, 
you're wrong because of X. Well, actually, X isn't um, very credible. Well, you're wrong because you're wrong. Uh, okay, I mean, I could lead you to water, but I can't make you drink it. Also, ignorance is bliss. A lot are afraid of there might not be anything worth looking into. However, often authors are looking to give you questions, not answers. And it's up to you to come up with your own answer. Alas, even when some know there's a possible deeper meaning, they don't want to bother. So to conclude this, I'm going to talk about why I feel so secure in making these crazy wild theories. You know, if this was just any series, I might not be so willing to do this. However, this is Kingdom Hearts. It's really a shame that so many people are unwilling to listen to someone because they think differently or just downvote them because, oh, I don't like the way you're thinking. You're thinking too different. You know, I don't really care about the downvotes. What I care about is the sentiment behind it. I would really hope that the community would be more willing to think this, think more critically. That's why I do this. I do this because I actually want to inspire things out of people. Being able to analyze and come to your own conclusion on a fictional series just may prepare you for real life. The best place that deep thinking is applicable is your own self. Deep inside of you is your purpose. Find that and it won't lead you astray. I can't answer what the meaning of your life is, but hopefully I can show you ways to go about finding that answer. A reason why I feel so inspired myself to want to go out and inspire other people to look into the deeper meaning and things is because of Nomura. Nomura's words himself. He really does want people to go out there and search for those deeper meanings. If you uh, don't believe me, just look at a quote from when he made the movie Final Fantasy Advent Children. Nomura felt that Advent Children differed from Hollywood films where the meaning of most scenes tend to be explained. With Advent Children, however, the staff wanted viewers to be able to interpret scenes themselves, allowing them to come to different conclusions. Okay, we're supposed to come with different conclusions. We aren't supposed to just sit here and then get a general consensus and then if anyone thinks differently, well, bad person, let's burn them at the stake for being a heretic. Like, no. We should want to think differently. We should want to have different opinions and different conclusions on how these things take in place. Here's some more quotes from the director's secret reports, which has a ton of information. They do talk about uh, Naminé and Roxas, uh, but only about them being special nobodies, not exactly about how they were created. So I couldn't really use this for anything. Um, although one thing that was really interesting here, it says, for Kairi's heart to be hidden with Sora, it took special shape. So that's something that's interesting. Okay, so here they talk about um, Kairi's Keyblade. Although there wasn't really much to work with, so that's why I also didn't include this in the video. But um, he says down here, in reference to like, you know, how is it Kairi got the Keyblade? You know, it didn't really make any sense. How is it Riku got his own Keyblade? There was no really explanation to it. It doesn't really make sense. Something isn't really adding up. Right? And he says, when there isn't a normal process of acquisition, I think it's okay to think that there's a deeper meaning there. See, he given us the okay to think there's a deeper meaning. It's all right to want to wonder if there's something more. Instead of trying to establish the general consensus as fact, we should appreciate that there's different ways of looking at something. Okay, and then down here, He's talking about like upcoming games and you know what to look forward to. He says, also, there are new developments. I think the news will be able to satisfy the widely supportive Kingdom Hearts fans everywhere. Because there's still more to say about this new thing, please dare to think with a different flow rather than just going with what's mainstream. Fate doesn't happen by accident. There is necessity, right? We gotta stop saying these things are happening just because Maybe there's actually a reason for these things. Maybe we can find out. Maybe the clues were left there for us. In the near future, 
when you experience this new Kingdom Hearts, please see about opening this book. I think surely there are some of these points that will tie together. Right? He's saying, you know, when you look at the future stuff, come back and reference it. If he's leaving the clues, right, the dots for us to connect, why is it a bad thing when someone tries to connect some dots? That's what I'm trying to get across here. We shouldn't try to, you know, sh shun anybody for thinking differently. We should actually, in the spirit of Kingdom Hearts, the moral that there is to be learned. We should actually inspire one another to want to look for the deeper meaning. Okay, um, so real quick, I have this video, Deep Dive, if you haven't checked it out, if Zero Sora, if you're still watching, this is a personal message to you, I really think you should watch this because you seem to be someone that really does care and is passionate and, you know, wants to look to see. Even though you were opposing my views, the fact that you were even willing to put up and have these counter arguments shows that you really do care so i think you should check out deep dive i mean i i it's not like food for thought there's a reason for the names food for thought is like okay here's these ideas i just want to share them with you what do you think and then i have deep dive where i actually do a bunch of you know research i actually make sure i verify these things that i'm saying i do i make a premise a hypothesis and i have a whole bunch of evidence to support it uh remember earlier i was talking about you know, Kyrie gets her power from the Keyblade, the Keyblade gets its power from the Kingdom Hearts. Well, I have this theory in here where I say that Kingdom Hearts is the power to make to make something out of nothing. Which would then be like, oh, okay, of course Kyrie could give Sora a new body. She has the power of Kingdom Hearts in her. She has the power to make something out of nothing. Right? So he here's a little clip of me going over that. With Kingdom Hearts' power, he could become that higher existence that that encapsulates all and shape the world in his image. I'm sure you noticed it earlier. I referred to Xemnas' heart as a pale light. Xemnas then referred to Kingdom Hearts as a pale light. This is no coincidence. Xemnas has been trying to emulate Kingdom Hearts' power the whole time. The power to turn nothing into something is essentially what his ethereal blades are. Ethereal blades or aerial blades as they are known in Japan represent his desire to be one with air, air being the closest thing to nothing. Despite being all around us, air is barely acknowledged or interacted with. Air isn't something you can destroy, it's always safe. He just wanted to be free on earth. He previously- Alright, so yeah, there's just a little thing. I actually draw the connections and I have reasons for it and everything I'm saying, it's like piles up. So I start at the beginning, I have a premise, and with each chapter, I'm building up more and more, and then it climaxes at a certain chapter where I kind of bring everything together. It all culminates into one big theory. So yeah, if you want to check that out, that's there. And also, you know, I don't just say, here's the theory analysis, I also go over the morals, I believe, we're trying to be teach. Very relevant to this topic. The most important lesson was revealed to us in Dream Drop Distance. Nobody's being able to grow hearts isn't a retcon or to make the story more complex or convoluted. It's to teach you you can't trust and believe everything told to you even if it comes from an authoritative figure. Things aren't always going to be simple and clean. You shouldn't think twice about what you believe in. But when it comes from someone else, you shouldn't automatically accept things at face value. There's usually another side, another story. Skepticism can be scary, but face your fears and be willing to take that deep dive. So yeah, I think that's super relevant to this topic. You know, you use, you try to use proof from someone like Anselm the Wise to say, here's why nominee has been explained. Well, yeah, you don't have to believe in every single thing that's told to you because even the game will lie to you. You get told by various characters, oh, nobody still have hearts. And then later you get told, oh, they do have hearts. Well, it turns out you shouldn't have believed those people. And they probably had very good reason to think that they are correct in thinking that they don't have hearts. But uh, something I don't get is why people take such offense to the fact that they might be wrong about a story. That they might not fully understand what's going on. Maybe it's because I'm a writer and I understand this so well, but you should realize that the author wants you to be secure in thinking that you know what's going on, even though you don't actually. 
It's called Plot Twist. That shouldn't come as a surprise. It's done all the time. It's the goal of the writer, really, to trick you. Even when the story is well written or convoluted enough to make it not easy to predict, the reader should still be able to predict the events to come. This is because of foreshadows. Any good story should have a good amount of foreshadows. Now to counteract the foreshadowing, red herrings are used to mislead the reader. An author can try their best to stop a reader from predicting where the story is going while also doing their best to set up the future events. So that's it. Thanks for watching.